We're going to see a whole lot more green tomorrow as Chicago continues to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. The holiday is officially tomorrow, which means more parties and parades. <laughs> but who is St. Patrick and why do we celebrate, especially mm -hmm. in Chicago? We do it big here. Joining us now with some in insights is Michael Murphy, a professor in the Department of Theology at Loyola University. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Uh, good morning to you, Audrina and Ryan. My pleasure. As we're sharing this, I'm going to be learning too. So first tell, tell us who St. Patrick was, how we became the St. Pat known today. Well, St. Patrick uh, was born Suckett, S-U-C-C-A-T. He was a Welshman probably living in a Roman outpost uh, of Britain, you know, as the empire was fading there in the fourth century. He was uh, picked up in a slave raid by Irish and brought over to the Emerald Isle and was enslaved for six years. He returned home, he escaped. It was a, it's a dramatic story. He returned home to his a loving parents, lived there for about 25 years, and then became a priest and a bishop, and then went back to Ireland to uh, you know tend to the souls and all the famous stories about snakes and clovers after that. Very interesting, did not know that, did you? Mm -hmm. Learned something every day. Well, we saw the Southside Irish Parade, of course, the parade downtown on Saturday after the dying of the river to green. Parades, a big part of the St. Patrick's Day celebrations, but what's the history behind those? Yeah, those, those parades are really special. The, uh, uh, the Southside one's really special to Chicagoans particularly. You know, the history will surprise you. Like, the first one was actually in Florida. The Irish don't do this in Ireland. Uh, they, they celebrate the, the feast day on the Catholic calendar, but there's no parades. The first one was by a, a colonial outpost of a Spanish colony in San, uh, San Augustine, Florida, and it was uh, an Irish viceroy. <laughs> so, but then it really, it really took off. Uh, these Irish soldiers conscripted by the British in in the uh, 1700s, and they wanted a, a, a taste of their homeland, so they started kind of parading around in New York City, and that parade has grown and grown. It's the biggest one ever. You get three million people there, 150,000 participants. So that's a short history. Then, of course, ours in Chicago, 1962 is when the, they died at the river, but it's a big party every year. Oh, of course, and everyone has clovers all over them, whether it's like a tattoo yeah. or a shirt. So what's that significance with the holiday, the clover? Well, it's it gets very theological, but the, the legend goes, and I'll say this, the, the Irish are well known for not letting the facts get in the way of a good story. <laughs> but the idea is this, is that like uh, teaching Irish people, the Celts, about God and the Trinity, very complex. So Patrick famously held up a clover the three-leaved clover and said, it's, God is just like this, three things in one. And uh, that, 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 tend to, uh, that worked apparently because they got thousands of converts in Ireland and been a Catholic country ever since, although that's kind of changing these days, but that's the short story there. All right, man, you summed it up, broke it down for us. I appreciate that, Professor yeah. Michael Mur Murphy. Thank you for being with us and uh, breaking it down to how we can understand it. <laughs> happy more St. Than Patrick's Day, and to my Italian friends, happy St. Joseph's on the 19th. Take care. Take care. Yeah.